Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. First of all, a bit of a milestone just went by, and the channel is officially two years old, which is right around the age that children apparently start to build towers of four or more blocks. So I guess I'll have to start talking about that strategy more often. I like to think of each successive year as a new season. So we're now in season three, and like I did last year, I've swapped out video clips in the intro with ones from more recent videos. For this video though, we'll take a look at some interesting questions that you guys have brought up or corrections from the last few videos. To start things off from the video comparing Scout Cavalry and Eagle Scouts, there were two common questions that came up which some people were left wondering about. First off, some were asking about the tracking technology or squires at the barracks. Now it's true that tracking does increase the Eagle Scout's line of sight by two and technically helps scouting rate, which for interest's sake we can recalculate after getting. It ends up putting them at around the same scouting ability as Feudal Age Scout Cavalry. The main reason I didn't even think to mention it in the video is that 75 food is quite a bit if your rationale is you want better scouting on just one unit. And it's going to come at the cost of slowing down important things like your castle time. If you're already going heavy on man at arms as Aztecs or something like that, then maybe you pick it up as a personal preference thing because you find it helpful in using those units. But getting tracking just for the purpose of scouting sounds like a habit that you could cut if you're looking to speed up your early game. A second comment on that video that came up even more often was about how the Eagle Scout can garrison in the town center to heal, while the Scout Cavalry can't. Now that is a notable difference, and if we check it out, it heals 1 HP every 10 seconds, or about 6 HP per minute. That means though, at 1 HP, it would take over 8 minutes to get back to full health. I probably should have mentioned something about the healing, and in checking it out, I was pretty surprised with how slow it is. My main thought on healing is it's probably not a great use of your scout's time. Again, that really early scouting is the most important, and a scout cavalry can take out an eagle scout at full health in the feudal age anyway. So if you're healing it to survive a later fight, it might not even make a difference. You really want to get the most out of your eagle scout in the early game while he's special, and he's not doing you much good hiding in the town center, recovering 6 HP per minute, unless in your specific game you think you have a very good reason to do that. The next one hits a little bit closer to home, and it's the Samurai vs Jaguar Warrior comparison. It was pointed out that Jaguars might be better against Samurai than I showed, and I even saw a conspiracy theory that I might have been covering up for the Japanese, which actually isn't something I would do. The tests in the Aztec Civ overview were for HD, and the Samurai won in that case in all the trials I ran. But it turns out if you set it up again in the expansions, something weird happens. Sometimes the Samurai wins, and sometimes the Jaguar Warrior wins, depending on who attacks first. So what's going on? Well, elite Jaguar warriors in regular HD have plus 10 against infantry, and in the expansions they have plus 11. For whatever reason, it didn't show up in the official change logs, and that might have been because it seems like such a small change it slipped through the cracks. Why is plus 1 attack making such a difference in this matchup though? Well, if we watch a few times in HD, we see that if the Jaguar warrior attacks first, the samurai has 2 HP left after 3 hits. If the Jaguar Warrior then has an extra attack, that means the Samurai has 0 HP left after those same 3 hits. This feels like trivia territory, but I think it speaks to an important point of how large just a difference of one attack can make to an outcome. Obviously this was a matchup where the numbers lined up just right, but it's still a great example of how important something like a blacksmith upgrade can be to significantly change the outcome of a fight. Moving on, T West pointed out in the repairing video that town centers are a big exception to repairing costs and use up double the wood to repair their HP instead of half like every other building. Apparently this effect doesn't happen if you test it in the scenario editor, but does happen in a real game where you would be using this information. His explanation is that it's an issue in how damage is dealt in the scenario editor not being the same as damage in game which is good to know, and goes along with something else I noticed in that video, which is that damage buildings from triggers don't show any flames as you start to repair them, and it's only when they cross into a new flame animation that they'll spontaneously combust. He also mentions a super special case where town centers cost a bit of stone to repair in the Dark Age only, though I didn't find that in HD in either a scenario editor test, a random nomad map, or on a town center rush. 
When I tried it in the expansions though, suddenly it did start costing stone to repair in Dark Age. So this is maybe another example of an expansion change that didn't make it into the changelog. Next up, Darius wanted to know in the Civ overviews why the Spanish got a higher grade than Persians for cavalry. Lewis correctly answered that it's because Persians don't get Bracer. I'm gonna go ahead and say that's always the correct answer when it comes to the Persians. Also related to the Spanish, it was pointed out in the Montezuma video that I had said Cortez died poor and that he actually didn't. I looked into it some more and I agree that he probably didn't. I read that he was heavily in debt when he died and I think I got it into my head that that means he must have been poor. But I guess if you don't pay your debts, it's possible to be technically in debt and rich at the same time. Or to be rich in property but low on cash. That seems to be the position on his Wikipedia page, though in his actual letters to the King of Spain, Cortez did say he was old and poor shortly before he died, in addition to being in debt and with great expenses. That might have been an exaggeration, and it sounds like he did have enough left over to look after his children. There were also various people on that video asking about or pointing out a better pronunciation of Montezuma as Moctezuma. From what I've read, both are accepted and the campaign went with Montezuma, so that's what I went with. I would point out though that in a podcast I listened to which interviewed three professors with a background in the field, all three of them used the Moctezuma pronunciation. So it's entirely possible that that is more authentic and I get the impression it's preferred in academic circles. In that same video I also didn't mention the turtle ships that are present in the last level and there's an interesting suggestion in the comments that it might be a reference to a Chinese explorer and a widely dismissed conspiracy theory that he may have discovered North America 70 years years before Columbus. The turtle ships could be a clever little reference to that. On a related note to all this history stuff, some people were wondering if the campaign versus history videos are an ongoing series and if there will be lots more. It's certainly a style of video that takes a lot of work and research, but I do have a lot of fun making them and learn a lot of interesting stuff, so I'd like to eventually cover all the major campaigns in a similar way. I liked pairing the Montezuma campaign with the Aztec overview pretty close together, so I'll be trying to do more of that sort of thing going forward with other civilizations. It's always nice to get a little theming bonus happening with the videos. Shifting gears, a type of comment and personal message I've seen a surge of in the last month or so is people coming across the channel and being surprised that Age of Empires is still being played, or they're deciding to go out and get the game or dust off their old copy. I'm not aware of any Steam sale or anything going on like that at the moment, so I don't know why there's been so much renewed interest lately. But one of the most rewarding things for me as an Age of Empires YouTuber is hearing from people who are just jumping into it now or coming back, because that's what keeps the game alive and the community healthy. And just to wrap this one up, I found a comment that I think sums up the channel perfectly and I wanted to share. FreakyStyle1996 said on the Mongol Civ overview, I came here to see how to play with the Mongols. I ended up learning the durability of light cavalry against ranged is a linear function with a root in x equals 12.26. I don't know if that's a good thing or if they learned anything about playing the Mongols, but that's the channel in a nutshell. That's all for this one though. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.